This case is between an employee, Frank Varela, and his employer, Lamps Plus. In early 2016, Lamps Plus was the victim of a cyber attack, and a lot of the company's data about their employees was stolen, including the personal data of Mr. Varela. Shortly thereafter, Mr. Varela filed a class action lawsuit in federal court seeking to litigate on behalf not only of himself but of a number of other Lamps Plus employees. Once he filed suit, Lamps Plus filed what's called a motion to compel individual arbitration. Mr. Varela and Lamps Plus waived their right to proceed in court for the claims that they might have against one another. And there's fairly standard language in the arbitration agreement that does this. There is no express language in the arbitration agreement saying that the parties will not engage in class arbitration. And the issue here is, did the parties agree in an arbitration agreement that they could resolve claims on a class-wide basis? Lamps Plus is saying the arbitration agreement says nothing about class arbitration and that it clearly envisions traditional bilateral arbitration. Mr. Varela, on the other hand, is saying that the arbitration agreement contains broad language that authorizes the court to compel class arbitration. And so the issue for the court to decide is, did the parties agree that their claims could be resolved through class arbitration. This case is a follow-on from a 2010 decision in a case called Stolt-Nielsen. And in Stolt-Nielsen, the Supreme Court held that a court cannot compel parties to proceed through class arbitration unless the arbitration agreement shows that the parties agreed to do so. The Supreme Court has made clear that arbitration traditional arbitration as envisioned by Congress and the Federal Arbitration Act is bilateral individual arbitration. And that is the default of what parties are agreeing to when they enter into arbitration agreements. Fast forward eight years, that issue is now squarely before the court. Lamps Plus uh, best argument is that traditional ways of interpreting contracts and including the language make clear that it never would have agreed to class-wide arbitration. Class-wide arbitration is such a unique mechanism for resolving disputes that Lamps Plus never would have agreed to resolve disputes with its employees in this manner. Part of what Lamps Plus is seeking is a clear rule from the Supreme Court that says that when a lower court is reviewing when a request to proceed through class arbitration, that the court should demand and look for express language in the arbitration agreement authorizing the parties to proceed through class-wide arbitration. Mr. Varela's uh, best argument is to look to the contract, and the contract does contain fairly broad language saying that the parties will agree to resolve disputes through arbitration. In some sense, Mr. Varela is urging the court to read the words in a more literal sense to say all proceedings means that the parties agree that everything, including class-wide claims, should proceed through arbitration. And the reason this could be an interesting case is because there are a lot of contracts out there and a lot of arbitration agreements out there in which the agreement does not explicitly address whether the parties can proceed through class arbitration. And so the court uh, has an opportunity to uh, resolve a lot of uncertainty here about how courts interpret agreements that do not contain explicit language addressing class-wide arbitration.